Dear listeners, I am Daniela, the spokeswoman of the Cybergene SARS-CoV-2 Task Force, and today we talk about corona clusters and how just a few super spreaders keep the pandemic going. Many people who catch the coronavirus manage to avoid infecting anyone else. The disease is mainly spread by just a few individuals. In this podcast, we explain what makes these individuals so infectious and the significance of the K-factor. Occasions such as a club gathering or church service or even dinner in a restaurant can result in a further dynamic upswing in the transmission of the coronavirus. We saw this happen again only yesterday at a restaurant opening in Germany, where a single guest infected a group of at least 20 other people. This is what is meant by a super spreader event. Incidents of this kind have now been recorded all over the world, including in South Korea, Britain and the USA, where a single person has caused thousands of infections. Our colleagues, in particular the team at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, where extensive research is being conducted in this area, have now concluded that 10% of those infected with corona are responsible for 80% of new infections. Consequently, these super spreader events have much greater significance than previously assumed. In tracking such events, scientists use a value called the dispersion factor K. While the much quoted reproduction rate R indicates how many other people an infected person infects on average, K describes how cases of illness cluster in certain places. The lower the value of K, the more infections can be attributed to a small number of individuals, the so-called superspreaders. Contrary to what the reproduction rate might suggest, we at the Cybergene Task Force believe that many people infected with corona will never pass it on to another person. In fact, we believe that most people will not transmit the infection. In the earlier SARS and MERS outbreaks, the K-factor also played a major role in theories of how these viruses spread. In the current pandemic, more and more colleagues, including the team at the University of Hong Kong, are now coming to the same conclusion. They report that there are many concentrated clusters in which a small number of people are responsible for a large proportion of the infections. Our research is particularly focused on the question of why some people are so much more contagious than others. Unfortunately, we do not yet have a full and satisfactory explanation. Our current theory is that people who have caught the virus are at the most infectious only for a short period, namely one day before and one to two days after the symptoms appear. Two days later, the same person might behave identically without triggering such a large number of new infections. So the time window in which someone is highly infectious is actually only very short. An additional factor in connection with the super spreader events is the spatial circumstances. In enclosed spaces, there is a significantly higher risk of becoming infected. This is where so-called aerosols do the most damage, and we will say more about these in the next podcast. The type of activity that takes place within an enclosed space also determines the outcome. For example, slow, shallow breathing carries a lower risk than heavy, deep and fast breathing, such as might occur when an individual is dancing in a nightclub or exercising in a gym. Dear clients, to be prepared for a possible infection, we would urge you to please follow our advice in two key respects, namely to abide by all official hygiene guidelines and to follow to the letter all the recommendations of our COVID-19 immunization program. This is the best way to avoid serious problems during the current pandemic.